Bill C-4 banning conversion therapy comes into force. All the MPs voted to put a parent in prison if they try to stop their own children from transitioning to another gender. In Ottawa on December 1, 2021, the House of Commons unanimously agreed to pass Bill C-4, the legislation to ban conversion therapy, through all stages without study or amendment after a conservative motion, making it the first bill to pass the House in the 44th Parliament. During the session, MPs voted to jail parents for up to five years for trying to stop their own children from switching their genders. This decision sends a clear message that the government is determined to protect the rights of LGBTQ plus individuals, including minors forgetting about the heterosexual majority. To add insult to injury, the bill's swift passage through the Senate on December 7 and its subsequent royal assent on December 8, 2021, demonstrates the government's determination to end conversion therapy in Canada. In today's society, there is growing concern about the potential confusion that may arise among minors due to events such as Drag Queen Story Hour, as well as the introduction of graphically explicit literature and covert inappropriate sex education classes in schools. One would expect that out of the 338 members of Parliament, at least one would advocate for the rights of the heterosexual community. This sets up a situation where a minor could be confused or influenced by gender ideologies. Although genetic makeup plays a role in determining gender identity, it is not the sole factor. Social factors, such as the gender roles portrayed by family, authority figures, mass media, and other influential individuals in a child's life, can also impact their gender identity. Considering all the chaos that is playing out in the life of the child, according to the law, parents are prohibited from interfering for providing reassurance that their child's assigned gender at birth is the intended one. Here's what happens when a former parliamentarian confronts the media and the public. Around the world, most countries have a free press. The gender self-identification as a ground for protection against discrimination. Most people living in this riding support these policies. They have a choice on June 19. They can support a fake conservative who like the rest of his party, will say and do nothing, or to elect, to elect someone who is not afraid to speak up against a radical gender ideology and to fight to protect women and children. Thank you very much. I'm ready to answer questions. Maintenant, je suis prêt à répondre à quelques-unes de vos questions. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. What do you think about the reluctance of journalists to ask of questions? Are you also aware of the fact that Trudeau bought out the media? I sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our government off the hook for no good reason. Frankly, I think that's insulting. It's clear that they let us off the hook for a very good reason, because we paid them $600 million. You don't get stellar headlines like these without greasing the wheels a bit. In the 2019 budget, the federal government allocated nearly $600 million in subsidies to specific media outlets that meet their approval. This substantial sum is intended to address the gap in the government's ability to influence Canadian print and online media. It was a blind spot because the majority of Canadian media is already receiving government support. Magazines, for example, receive significant subsidies to offset the expenses of printing and mailing. Additionally, regulatory subsidies provide a monopoly to the government's preferred broadcasters, making it nearly impossible for competitors like the No Defunct Sun News Network to enter the market. While the government's intentions may be well-meaning, the allocation of such a large sum of money to select media outlets raises concerns about media independence and impartiality. It is essential to ensure that media outlets remain free from undue influence and that all voices are heard in the public discourse.